Hi friends, I thought I would share with you something Jesus showed me. I've been asking him again. Reiterate to me, Lord. Keep reiterating to me when I go to bed, even during the day, exactly how you want me to preach to people and what the message is you want me to preach. And I had a couple of dreams. In the first dream, I was walking and I saw an old couple. They were dressed very nicely. The guy had a suit, nice tie. The old lady had her Sunday dress. I could tell it was Sunday they were going to church. And so I walk up to them on the road right next to them and I just start walking with them. And they said hello to me, I said hello back. They asked me if I believe in Jesus Christ, I said I did. They asked me if I accepted him as Lord and Savior, I said I did. You know, they told, asked me if I believed in the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, I said I did. And then I started asking them something. Here's what I said, I told them, I had the Holy Spirit in my heart when I was 18, and I did this. And I looked up at them from the ground. I look up at their faces. I believe I was looking up towards the right, actually. So I'm looking up on them while on the ground, and I said, I did this for about five hours a day, for about 33 days before Jesus Christ showed himself to me from heaven and came into me to fill me through the Holy Spirit in my heart. How many days did you bow down asking Jesus Christ to come show himself to you and enter your flesh to be one with him? And they looked at me and went like this, they gnashed their teeth at me like a dog, right? And they were angry at me because they were convicted that they hadn't done any of that. They never humbled themselves in the sight of the Lord. There was no shameless persistence. Listen, guys, you believe in Jesus Christ in your heart. That's the Holy Spirit. You know, that's a gift from the Father. You didn't have to work for that. But Jesus said, work hard to enter the kingdom. Because many will try and fail. I can tell you that my spirit is in heaven. That Jesus pulled it into a secret place. But you can't tell what I'm feeling. How can you look at another person and say, I know what he's feeling is real. I can tell you that if, you know, I can tell you that my mind feels like it's in heaven right now. Like I feel heavenly bliss upon me, but it's hard for you to believe it. You know, it's, you see me, I see you. Even if Jesus came here, even if angels came here, you wouldn't be able to see anything visually. The Pharisees couldn't tell Jesus had anything different than the rest. In fact, they accused him of doing all the miracles through the power of Satan. So I had another dream. Again, I was walking down, I think it was Hollywood or Sunset Boulevard in LA where I used to live for years. And I came across this Christian kid, young guy, he had a cross, smiling, you know. Um, and I asked him, hey, can I ask you a question, brother? He goes, sure. I said, do you believe in Jesus Christ? He goes, yeah, I do. I said, do you believe? that he's your savior and that he died for your sins and rose from the dead and ascended to heaven? He said, yeah, I do. I said, do you believe in the father of Jesus Christ? He says, yes, I do. I said, do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the father and Jesus Christ, and that all three dwell in Jesus in bodily form? And he agreed. He said, yes, I do. Then I asked him, I looked at him very intently like this. In the dream I said are you in heaven now and he goes like this what I go are you in heaven now and he goes what are you talking about I said didn't Jesus say seek the kingdom of heaven and in the Lord's Prayer father let your kingdom come well has his kingdom come and he looked at me bewildered. And I looked at him and said, you're supposed to ask that prayer and not stop asking it until it comes. And I just walked away from him. I've had many dreams like this. This is only just a couple of examples. And Father, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Kingdom of heaven. What did Jesus say? My Father and I will come and make our home, their home is heaven, with you. You're not going to die and go to heaven. Uh-uh. 
He's coming here to give it to you. If you don't attain the kingdom of heaven here, you're not going to inherit it over there, my friends. And He's not going to give you the kingdom of heaven until you do everything that He said. Hate your life. Do not love the world or anything in the world. Come to me with all your heart, all your mind, which is all your thoughts. Set your mind on the things above. Set all your hope in the glory which you will receive at the coming of Jesus Christ. When we see Him, we will be made like Him, and all who have this hope in Him purify themselves. 1 John 3 When the chief shepherd appears, then you will receive the crown of life that will never fade away. What does it mean, when the chief shepherd appears? He's not going to appear anywhere in heaven. If, if you were to die and go to heaven and receive this, Peter would say, when you die, you'll go to heaven and you'll appear there. Not that he will appear. For, for the very fact that it says, when the chief shepherd appears, means Jesus is going to appear here. Jesus said, I will come like a thief in the night. Here. I will come to you where you are and take you to be with me where I am. I'll come and take you. I will come to you where you are and take you to be with me where I am. He's talking about the rapture. He's talking about the being caught up in your spirit into the heavenly realms. Alright? Jesus literally appears. But the problem is most people don't have the discipline to get off the internet. To dedicate themselves to prayer and fasting until kingdom come. Even if that kingdom come involves judgment first. Even if it involves a little bit of fire in the spirit first and rebuke. Even if it means the angel of death has to come kill you, you ought to not love your life so much as to shrink from death. Right? They will hear his voice and those who are in the grave will be called out of their grave. Are you in your grave? If you're not in the grave with Christ, if you're trying to find your place in this world, if you're looking for a husband or a wife or a career or a calling, if you're searching for an earthly fate, you're not going to attain your heavenly destiny. Fate, your fate, F-A-T-E, I'm not talking about faith, your fate, F-A-T-E, is in your own hands. Whether you want to go get married and divorced or marry two wives or, or, or become a doctor or a lawyer or a mechanic or a carpenter, you choose your own fate. But as soon as you bypass your fate and say, I'm not going to do anything, Lord, take my fate and give me my destiny. You're not going to receive your destiny, which is what God has written for you. And your fate, which is what you want to do, right? God has given us an option. Here, I give you two roads. Take your life, do what you want with it, or give it all up to me, wait for me. Blessed are those who wait. You must learn to wait for the Lord to actually come. That's why Jesus said, if anyone does what I command, I'll show myself to him. He says, you will see me. I will come to you. About Paul, I think it's in Acts 23, 22. It says, uh, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth. Uh, how specific is that? To see the righteous one and to hear words out of his mouth. Paul says about himself, Haven't I? seen the Lord? Have I not seen the Lord too? Am I not an apostle? Are you not the work of my hands? And it says in Acts 23, and one night the Lord stood near Paul. Paul had witnessed the Lord. He had met the Lord face to face. That's your destiny. Forsake your faith. Tell Lord. Tell the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm done. I'm just going to wait for you in my room. 
and you wait and you fast and you pray and you fast and you pray even if it means you're gonna fast your way to the point of death you should be willing to do that for Jesus just like he went 40 days without food it's like Moses went 40 days without water don't you think he thought maybe he would die and God told them come up here for 40 days do not eat food and do not drink water from Moses don't you think he feared for his life as much as belief as, as someone has in God they're still a human being right they're still fearing that maybe they're going to die but he did it anyway right because that's what courage is the definition of courage in my book is even though you're scared you still do it and I pray that the courage of Jesus Christ comes upon you all in the name of Jesus I pray Amen.